Okay, so things are about to get messy because I am actually going to be doing some acrylic pouring. And I am going to be turning these ceramic tiles into a set of coasters. So we shall see how that turns out. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Set Play. And today I am going to be doing some acrylic pouring on these tiles to make some coasters and I am showing you the supplies I am using here which will be linked in the description below and I'd like to mention that I'm not sponsored by any of the brands mentioned today this just happens to be what I'm using basically I am using acrylic pouring medium it is the Liquitex brand acrylic pouring medium I am using some Liquitex basics I am using some iridescent medium to put in the acrylics to make them look shimmery and I am using just a little bit of the Americana enamel paint in gold along with some System 3 acrylics as well. So I'm putting in some acrylic pouring medium and then I'm going to take just a little bit of my paint and putting it into my acrylic pouring medium. I'm not going to use a whole lot because the System 3s are actually a little bit too thick but it's really what I had on hand. I actually prefer to use the Liquitex Basics or even some of the Liquitex acrylic inks or something thinner to mix with it, but I didn't have those colors on hand, so I'm using some of my System 3s. So basically, I use less paint and more acrylic pouring medium when I'm using a thicker paint. And you see me mixing this here. I already have a few of my colors mixed. I'm mixing in some of my dark green with my light green because this green tends to yellow out when it's thinned out enough and when it starts to pour. I discovered that the hard way when I made some of these for my friend for Christmas. I'm also using some acrylic pour oil that I bought from Amazon. Again, everything will be linked in the description below in case you would like to get some of these items as well as some suggested items. I'm only putting a few drops of that into my dark green paint because I'm using this dark green a lot, but I only need a few drops because I don't really care to have a whole lot of cells, but it's just kind of fun. Now I'm putting my iridescent medium in the white because the white is going to be one that I'm using the most. It's almost going to be my vehicle for the rest of the pouring or the rest of the colors, I should say, to mix around with. I'm using just some ceramic tiles. I taped the bottom off with some artist tape. I didn't tape the whole thing because I'm going to be putting some cork on the bottom. I just taped around the edges so that way there they don't get too messy when I am pouring. And I will remove that tape later. So I'm going to start with my white. And I'm making these ones for myself and my husband to match our living room decor, but this is not my first time doing this. I actually made quite a few sets for Christmas this year, and on some of them, like for my sisters and one of my best friends, I actually drew on them with acrylic markers as well. I won't be doing that here because I ended up really just wanting to kind of go with a color scheme and not worry about a theme. However, I will show you examples of the ones I did for Christmas so you can see what that looks like. It's very simple. I have some of the Liquitex markers, um, Liquitex acrylic markers, and I just drew themes on them. I drew music theme for my friend Autumn and I did some sewing and crochet themes for my sister Sonia and it was a lot of fun. And basically, I do that after the acrylic pouring is dry and before I do the varnishing. And when I do draw on them with my markers, I do a spray varnish first. So that way there, when I brush on varnish after, it doesn't smear anything. Because sometimes I have to use my water-based markers first to do thinner lines, and that will get smudged with the varnish. Now I'm going to be adding my gold. And this actually was really easy to pour because it was a thinner paint to begin with. And this was my first time using enamel, but again, I didn't have any gold acrylic paint. So I decided to just try this enamel paint and it worked really well. And there's no rhyme or reason. You see, I'm doing each of them different. Some people like to push the tiles together and do a dirty pour right smack in the middle and then just spread it out that way. I like to do them individually, and just kind of see where they go. It's all a very big experiment. 
And I have to apologize if you are able to hear my dog barking in the background. I have a chihuahua and it's his favorite pastime. And he likes to do it at the most inopportune times. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. He's in the other room, but he's quite loud. And now I'm just going to speed it up because it's all basically just me going back and forth with the same colors. And now for the magic. In this part, I'm so impatient. <laughs> The hardest part of this is gripping the tiles. I remember when I was making the ones for my sister for Christmas, I accidentally dropped one of the tiles face down on another one. And <laughs> so I had to do two, like at least one of them had to be done completely over. It was ridiculous. I had to wipe it down and start over. And that was the first set of tiles I actually made. So the reason why I hadn't filmed it before is because I was obviously creating those as a surprise for Christmas. And here, what you see me doing, where you see me dabbing it a little bit, sometimes part of it doesn't want to flow down the tile, but if you put a little bit more paint right in the area where it's not flowing, the paint will start to mix together and start flowing again. Otherwise, you get these little ridges where it doesn't want to go completely over the tile. And I like to make sure my edges are pretty well covered as well. I'm just going through... It's just so satisfying and so fun. And this is a really, a fairly quick project. The pouring part is fairly quick, obviously, and messy. And the thing that you see them sitting on, I have a plastic drop cloth type of thing. Almost looks like a trash bag, but it's not a bag. It's just regular plastic. And then on top of that, I have a plastic, it almost looks like a pallet, but I'm a pharmacy technician and this is some packaging that um, some vials of medication come in that I get at work and then normally the packaging would be thrown away so I just bring it home to use it as you know palettes for painting or for my acrylic pouring but obviously this is not something that is readily available there are a lot of other ways you can do this well as well you could use egg cartons you could use a wire drying rack or cooling rack I should say that is normally used for cooking just anything that kind of has holes so that the stuff can seep through and that your your object that you're pouring on won't get stuck to it so you can actually like stick your hands underneath and that way there things don't stick and you can grip your tiles or your canvas or whatever else easily from below without messing anything up when you're trying to get the paint to flow. Now I'm going through with just a little torch that my husband actually got me as a stocking stuffer. I didn't have this before I did my other ones. And this is to help bring out some of those cells. Again, there's not going to be a whole lot because I didn't add a whole lot of the oil. It's just the little ones that will develop over time. And after this, I will be varnishing them with an acrylic medium. So that way there they are protected when people put their glasses down on them. And as you can see now, there's like a little bit of the cells developing. And I had a lot of ex, um, extra paint, so I just took some containers I had in the studio. You can get these in little travel packages. They usually come for things like shampoo and things like that for when you're on the airplane. You can buy them at Walgreens or wherever. I would say film cases, but that kind of dates me a little bit since film is no longer really a thing. And I just poured it in and put the cap on to keep it for later. Okay, so now to varnish these. I'm actually going to use the Liquitex Professional Gloss Medium and Varnish. This goes really well with the Liquitex Pouring Medium that I use, and I also use some of the Liquitex Basics in this. All of the Liquitex products are made to work with one another, so that's why I chose this. And I'm just going to use a sponge brush to apply this. And this is actually going to be my first layer of probably about three. I usually do about three layers. I just put some in the middle because I like to have a thick amount of varnish and I'm just going to spread it around and try and make it as even as possible and I get the edges as well because I want the edges to be protected. This is just to kind of even things out a little bit and to prevent some peeling 
especially from the edges since on the bottom they can kind of come up just a little so it kind of prevents that a little bit and it's glossy so it'll still keep the sheen from what we have below it because that's one thing that I really love about acrylic pouring is the glossiness especially on tiles because tiles are glossy to begin with and I'm just making sure that it's fairly even there it does show a little bit of lines from the sponge brush but I don't mind it so much because it gives it that homemade look which is obviously what I'm going for here because this is a homemade project so I don't really mind that as much sometimes I put a little too much on there I just kind of scoop it back up and put it back on the tile and something that I did before I did this I wiped the tiles down with a rag because sometimes the oil that I put in to create cells kind of comes through and sits on top after the acrylics are dry I didn't do it too bad this time. I didn't put a lot of oil in because I'm not somebody who's huge on cells. And if you look closely, there's some small cells in some of them. Like right here, you can see a cell. There's a cell. But I'm not huge on the cells, especially for this. So I didn't put a whole lot of oil in my paint ahead of time. I only put it in the green because I knew I'd be using the green in a lot of it. And they just kind of came out where they wanted to. So not all of the tiles have a lot of cells. Some of them have cells, some of them don't. It's just kind of where they came out. Okay, so I'm just going to let this dry before I put any more layers on. And then once I'm done doing this, I will be putting the cork bottoms on them so that they can be used as coasters. I'll be back when these are dry. So now I'm just going to be removing the tape from all of these and putting the cork backing on them. I'm just going to make sure that area is pretty clean. Put one of the cork backings on the bottom there. And then this is how they look and they're self-adhesive. You just pull this off and I just try to center this as best as I can on the back of the tile. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of seal it down and there we go. We have a finished coaster. I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of them to have a set. All right, we have our finished coasters. Look how shiny and pretty that is. I'm so excited. I really like the way these came out. Just so neat. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.